everyone, I'm Michaela Kathleen and in this video I'm talking about books on my shelves that I think are going to be considered classics one day. And I think I saw this video idea over on Jesse the Reader's channel originally, but I don't honestly remember for sure. But I've broken mine down into actually two categories. I have five picked out that I think will be considered classics one day, and then five that I think should be but probably won't be because they're not maybe as well known. So jumping right in, the first one that I have is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbotsky. This one is just incredibly popular. It's incredibly popular on booktube. It has been very popular on booktube for like all of booktube's existence. This one actually came out in 1999, which is even older than I thought. So that kind of already a little bit speaks to its staying power, because I feel like a lot of the really popular YAs that we think of are books that came out more like 2005 or even like in the 2010s. And yeah, I feel like this one just has a little bit more respect, I guess, than some other popular YA books. I feel like a lot of popular YA books are a little bit looked down upon by like older readers as being just for kids or even worse just for teenage girls <laughs> and therefore just kind of pushed aside as being not actually good or important literature. But I feel like this one kind of escapes that judgment that some of the other ones get. And this is actually not one that I even particularly like that much. I actually enjoyed the movie more. And yeah, among the YA on my shelves, this one is not even near the top for me, but I'm definitely in the minority with that opinion. And I think this one will live on and be looked back at as a classic. Somewhat in the same vein as like The Outsiders. Next I have The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. This one is just so good. Like it is undeniably good from the very lyrical prose to the very like hard-hitting use of death as a narrator to like the very heavy topics. This is a World War II story. This one I just definitely see being considered a classic one day. It is probably like I think the most thematically important book on this list of mine. And so yeah, this one was just the first one I thought of when I saw this video idea. Next I have The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. And The Hunger Games, I think sometimes people do still kind of dismiss it as a YA dystopia if they don't know the story well. But if you've actually read it, it is very clear to see that, it, that this is extremely high quality writing, a step above most other YA dystopias. Again, very important topics in this book that are explored so expertly. While these books are entertaining and fast paced and all of that, that definitely was not the primary goal. Like, I would say a lot of the dystopias on my shelves, while some of them do also explore important topics, although some of them really are just silly, a lot of them, it still feels that the primary goal is entertainment, whereas these, I don't know, it just feels, they feel heavier, more important. There's complex stuff happening here. And so I think over time, people will see this one as a classic, even if they don't think they will right now. Next I have A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, and this is a book about a young boy whose mother is dying of cancer. This story was written originally by a woman who was dying of cancer and did have a son, and she died before she could finish it, and it was completed by Patrick Ness. So it's just a really good exploration of grief. It has gorgeous gorgeous, gorgeous artwork throughout. It has already an award winner. And yeah, I think just the story and the packaging and everything will make this one a classic. And then for my last pick, I have an author, and that is Frederick Bachman. I think he, just as an author, will be considered a classic one day. Just all of his books in general, his oeuvre, his collection, <laughs> because he just writes some of the best characters, some of the most emotional stories 
I've seen his characters really feel like real people even if you only get like a paragraph or two of a side character that character still just you feel like you know exactly who they are in that short little bit of time and yeah they're just very heartfelt good books. <laughs> so that was it for the books that I have on my shelves that I think are going to be classics one day. Next up, books that I don't know if they'll be considered classics, but I think they should be. The first one being Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. And the reason I put this one in this category, but not in not the previous category, even though it is super well regarded already, is because I feel like celebrity memoirs just don't get to be considered classics. I guess I don't really know how long celebrity memoirs have been a thing. <laughs> but yeah, I just don't, I can't think of any celebrity memoir that I think is also considered a classic. But if one was to be a classic one day, I think this one is so deserving. It is so well written. It really has point that it's trying to get across, like a, a cohesive single message rather than just being like a general, here's my life. And I think that message is really strong and good. And yeah, this is just by far the best celebrity memoir I have ever read. Next, I have Kids of Appetite by David Arnold. And I feel like this should be a classic in the same way that The Outsiders is considered a classic, the same way that I think Perks of Being a Wallflower will be considered a classic. This is just a really good contemporary YA. The prose is so unique and interesting. The author has such an interesting way of thinking and putting that on the page. Again, the characters are very lovable. Much like The Outsiders, this is very much a teen found family story, but this is just not a super well-known book. And so I don't think it has enough of a fan base to become a classic, unfortunately, because I think it so deserves to be. Next, I have Tiger Lily by Jodi Lynn Anderson. And this is a Peter Pan retelling, but once again, such lyrical, beautiful prose. And again, it's exploring such interesting topics with such nuance. The characters are so well fleshed out and having such interesting thoughts. It's just really beautiful writing. It is, of course, in itself based on a classic, but I don't know that retellings really get to have classic status like their original stories do. Besides that, I think this one is also just not very well known. So sadly, despite the very beautiful writing in this one, I don't think it will ever be considered a classic. After that, I have The Knife of Never Letting Go, again by Patrick Ness. And this is one that maybe actually could have gone in the other column, along with A Monster Calls, because he is a pretty well-known author. But this does have the disadvantage of being a YA dystopia, and we all know how YA just sometimes is not taken as seriously. I will not say that I think this is quite to the standard of The Hunger Games, especially if you're looking at the entire trilogy, but the first book is incredibly strong. It is a really interesting concept of humans have crash landed on this alien planet long, long ago, and all of the women have disappeared. And at the beginning of the series, we don't know why, but the other big change that happened on this new planet is that people started being able to hear each other's thoughts. And the way that that is depicted is just very interesting, very well done. There are pages where the type is just very messy and all like written over top of each other to show how the main character is hearing the thoughts of everyone in town all at once. And the way that that affects their society Again, it's just well explored, and he creates a very unique world in this dystopia that I think makes it deserving of being considered a classic. And then finally, once again on this one, I have an author that I think should be considered a classic author in the future, but I don't know if he will, even though he is incredibly popular, and that is John Green. Again, John Green writes YA, 
So I don't know if he will be considered in that classic category. I don't know if his work will be considered in that classic category. It's obviously incredibly popular, but I do think it just doesn't quite get the reverence or respect that Perks of Being a Wallflower gets, for example. But I personally love his books. He's my favorite author. And so they're going to be classics in my heart. <laughs> And that was it for books on my shelves that I think are modern classics or deserving to be modern classics. Let me know down below if you have any books that you think will be considered classics one day. I hope you enjoyed watching. Remember, words matter.